Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome, welcome, people. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy, with your boy, S.D. Booker. Yeah, before we get started, hit that like button. Yes, you. Hit that like button and subscribe. So let's get started. Today's video is titled, Does She Believe in You? The she being your significant other, your wife, girlfriend, you know, that woman, that special woman in your life. Does she believe in you? Wow. So this is a topic that uh, I don't think is addressed or spoken uh, from a transparent and open perspective. These are topics that uh, brothers may share in private with the boys or the women may share with their homegirls about their man, how she doesn't believe in him. And like I said, he may share with the boys how his woman doesn't believe in him, right? So let's take a stab at this. Does she believe in you? Okay. I'm going to be objective with this, with this topic and try to attack it from a 360 point of view, different angles. Now we got, we got two types of guys, two or three types of guys and two types of women in this scenario or who could possibly be in the scenario where, Hey, she doesn't believe in the guy she's with. You know, and she's expressing that uh, with verbally or through her actions or her mannerisms, right? So what I like to do, I like to take lessons I've learned from my own life, from my past, and share those lessons with you, those lessons learned with you. So uh, let's dive into it. So 20 plus years ago, I would say. This was back in 1998, yeah, 1998 or 99, <clears throat> was with my, my first wife, and I'll just tell you how, how we met, briefly how we met. We met at a call center <laughs> uh, in Addison, Texas. Uh, I used to stay in, I was staying in Dallas, but I would catch the the bus to Addison, Texas to go to work. I didn't have a car at the time. I eventually worked my way to getting a car uh, from that job, from money made from that job at the time. I didn't even have a car. But uh, like we met. I was at one end of the aisle. She was at another end. She made eye contact. I made eye contact. Hey, introduced ourselves started dating now what i didn't know at the time is that she was a hustler right and i was a hustler too you know i was doing my thing on the side but also working so even though you know i, I, I hustled in my younger days i always had a job I always had a job but i would hustle on the, on the side illegal activities guys so once we got the Knowing each other, having conversations, you know, it was obvious. Like, we were both hustlers. Yeah, we worked, but we were both hustlers, right? So, I'm going to speed it up a bit. Fast forward, years later, you know, we get married. She gets pregnant. And I tell myself, man, I can't keep doing this, working this customer service job and hustling on the side. This is... uh I'm getting older. This is getting played. This, this is this is for the birds. This ain't me. I got to do something else, right? So, at the time, I'm maybe 23, 23, 24, something like that. So, I tell her, I say, hey, anybody, I'm going to go to this technical school and study computer science, computer networking, and computer science. <clears throat> And this is around, you know, like I said, 
9899. So this is with the big boom in the computer field, the IT field, the big boom. I want to get into that. Although I have no background in that. And she says to me, you don't know anything about computers. I don't think you'll be good at that. So, wow, I'm taking that in. And right then, I knew our time was coming to an end because I was thinking differently about growth and she wanted to keep me in the same spot, right? And so I was like, man, she, she can't go to the promised land with me. Now, we were already having issues. But when that happened, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the nail in the coffin here. Yeah. And, 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 and let me tell you, she wasn't working either. So I'm the breadwinner. She wasn't working. She's staying at home, taking care of our daughter. I'm the breadwinner. But I'm thinking about growth. And she tells me she doesn't think I'll be good at that. That I shouldn't do it. So I was like, oh, wow. She didn't believe in me. Now, let's take a step back and look at this from a 360 view, right? From one perspective, one can say, well, she was projecting onto you how she felt about herself, okay? She doesn't believe in herself. She doesn't believe she can try something new that she can succeed in a new field that she's never uh, has no experience in. So she doesn't feel like you can. She's projecting how she feels about herself onto you. That's one perspective. And that may be a valid perspective, right? I, I don't know. Because she did graduate. Well, not graduate. She was accepted on a full academic scholarship to Texas Tech. And she majored in mechanical engineering. And that's to, to be accepted to Texas Tech on a full scholarship, academic scholarship, you got to be pretty smart and you got to test pretty high. And to be in that major mechanical engineering at Texas Tech, man, you, you got to be pretty damn smart, right? Right. And uh, it's mostly just a hey, mostly white men in that field. It's competitive. It's not many women and not many uh, people of color be honest with you. But she did not complete it. She dropped out, right? Then she went to DeVry later and tried to study computer science and dropped out. Now, this isn't to bash her. I'm just giving this story context and what the lesson can be learned. And so you can take on different perspectives on the story. Now. Although she was smart, it was obvious she wasn't a finisher. And maybe that had something to do with how she felt about herself, her self-esteem or lack thereof. All right. So maybe she was projecting that on to me. So she took her stab at computer science at DeVry after the Texas Tech deal went sour and she didn't complete that. So now she got this guy who she met at a customer service agency, right, who hustles, dibbles and dabs on the side, right? So maybe she's projecting that onto me. Now, another perspective is maybe she didn't believe in me because I didn't have any wins on, under my belt. No, not did I not have any significant wins. I didn't have any wins in the corporate world under my belt. Now, she was, saw me do my thing, you know, on the street level and, and customer service is, is really easy. We were taking inbound calls, <clears throat> making outbound calls. Very, very easy. So maybe she just didn't know, you know, what was inside of me and I hadn't shown anything. No wins, no significant wins, no wins at all. Right. That's one perspective. That's another perspective. Right. So fast forward. We end up separating, eventually divorcing. I go to this technical school 
Computer Learning Center in Garland, Texas, man. Two years. Went to that school. Knew nothing about computers. Promise you I didn't. Right? Finished that. Got my first job doing desk side support. No experience. This is when, man, you can just go into an office and ask to speak to the manager or HR and put down your spiel. And that's what I was doing. Putting up people in the newspaper, putting up jobs or agencies in the newspaper, in the employment section, drive over there, wow, get my spiel. One guy said, he heard my spiel, told him I had no experience, completed school, looking for some experience, my first gig in the IT world. He listened, he looked at me for a minute, well, seemed a minute, probably realistically about 10 seconds. And he said, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance. So he sent me out on a job, hired me, sent me out on a job, DCI in Plano, Texas. The first technical job. Man, just just doing builds, fixes with computers and laptops and printers. Um, answering technical calls, getting in my car, going to, uh, they had a contract with Alcatel. So I would go to Alcatel offices and fix computers and laptops and printers. Entry level. A year into that job, the manager came up to me and said, hey, our network admin is leaving. How do you feel about taking on that position? Wow, well, I've only been in the IT industry for a year with hands-on experience. That schooling, that was just theory, basically. We did some hands-on, but mostly theory. So, wow, I took it. Fast forward a bit, man. We end up going to, she and I end up going to the child support court, right? Of course. And it was revealed how much I was making. And after the hearing, she came up to me and we, we there was no bitterness at this point at, at all. She came up to me and she's like, wow, wow, you really did it. I'm proud of you. You know, I'm sorry for not believing in you. I said, hey, things happen, man. You know, lessons learned. And we went our separate ways that day. So th those are two perspectives. Maybe she was projecting, perspective number one, maybe she was projecting how she felt about herself onto me. Perspective number two, I hadn't shown any wins. I hadn't shown her any different. I, I hadn't shown her I wasn't just this guy who, you know, could do customer service and dibble and dab in the streets to make money. Right? Although we would have some, you know, some intellectual sparring about current events and, and, and uh, philosophy and things like that, you know, she had to respect my mind. But realistically, there was nothing tangible I had shown her that I can take what I had in my mind and flip it into something real. So two different perspectives, right? So, this is another perspective, a third perspective, and this has nothing to do with me. This is this may be a third perspective why your woman doesn't believe in you. And I'll tell you this, fellas, when you start something, you must complete it. You got to finish your plate. Anything you start, complete it. Right? Even if um a year down the line, it's like, hey, this isn't for me. At least give it a good try, and good effort. But don't start school and quit. Don't start anything and just quit with it uh, without it being complete, right? Because you are being watched by your woman. Now, if you notice, you've never heard on television or from a woman's mouth I'm a woman of my word. That's just not something they live by. You hear from men, a man of my word. Our words are respected, right? Women, 
And I've been told this, never trust what a woman says, only what she does, right? So we understand, most men understand that women can be fickle. They're emotional and they're going to feel it. So regardless of what she said, man, she could change her mind in the next second, next what, next hour, next day, next week. And that's the way she's going. Has nothing to do with principle. Screw what she said. This is how she feels at this moment. All right. That happens all the time. Men can't live on that kind of frequency, that vibration, because, man, we're not going to get the respect we want in a home or in our communities if we if we live like that. But it is accepted by women. I'm not complaining. It is what it is. But men can't get that pass of saying they just changed their minds. Now, man, you know, there's been many situations that you, you're like, damn, I don't feel like going over there. But I said I'd do it. Damn, I don't feel like helping to move. But damn, I did say I'd do it. Damn, I don't feel like going to that event with her. But I said I'd do it. Right? So it's about principle and it's about word. And it's about, you know, our name. In that respect, the typical woman doesn't live like that. They live on feeling. How are they feeling? Hey, that's the way they go. And you've heard, I have the right to change my mind. Men don't typically say that. Women say that. All right. So that's the first thing. Don't, <laughs> don't think you can get, get, get by with what the women are doing. We're two different mindsets, right? And so, that's the thing. If your woman is constantly seeing you not complete things, making empty promises, being a dreamer, talking a good game, but not flipping it into something tangible and something into something real, she will stop believing in you. You got to get some wins, some, some completions under your belt, period. Got to get some wins, man. Stop sitting up in the bed, pillow talking and making dreams and fantasizing with her. Get to work. Complete. Hey, complete your task. Clean your plate. Period. Right. Now. Fast forward. Right. So I told you how that situation went with my first wife. We're going to fast forward. Maybe 15 years later my marriage now okay so of course when I met my current wife I'm in IT doing well making decent money but then I tell myself man I want more so I started looking like man what's this business analyst about IT business analyst so I started doing my research and I, I state this in the book too I started doing my research. I was like, wow, I've been doing a lot of this business analytical work already, but just didn't have the title. And I don't know all the jargon, but I can do this. So, man, immediately went to the bedroom, told my wife, hey, man, I'm making a, a career change in the same industry, IT, but I'm going to be a business analyst. She said, okay. Hey, man, made some changes to my resume a little bit. Put my resume out there on job boards. Two weeks later, I had an offer, nice offer. Turned in my notice, my two-week notice. Started my new job at a pharmaceutical company, a major pharmaceutical company in Fort Worth. Just like that, man. She didn't... Say I couldn't do it. She didn't think I could do it because I'd never done it. She didn't try to deter me from taking that, that chance, that risk. She just trusted me. Two years after that, I said, I want more. I said, I'm going to be a project manager, an IT project manager. Still in IT, but now I'm elevated to a project manager. Start studying. Self-studying, bought some books, self-study, put in my bed, okay. 
got promoted to project manager. Just like that. From belief in myself. Now, why did my first wife, when in my 20s, she reacted the way she reacted? And my current wife, later, when in her 40s, she reacted the way she reacted to the change. Good question. Now, age may have played a part too. My first wife was in her 20s, right? Years later, I'm in my 20s. My wife is, oh, I'm in my 40s. My wife is in her 40s. Now, maybe my current wife did react to somebody like that in her 20s, the way my first wife did. Maybe. Don't know. Maybe she learned from that, that, that moment. And so when she got with me, <laughs> she knew to support or just keep her mouth shut. Maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I'm coming at this from a 360 view, objectively, right? So I don't know. But I do know that my wife, current wife, did see me get some wins, did see some wins under my belt. I did build that trust. I did build up equity. I did sure I complete tasks and I could clean my plate. Fast forward after I got the project management gig. Said I'm gonna write a book. Right? Now she had seen people say they're gonna write a book or start a book throughout her years on this earth and it never completed. Right? I couldn't have that on my resume. So she saw me complete a book and publish a book. Another win. Constantly building up that equity. Right? So Regardless of the situation, guys, it's not even really about your woman so much. That plays a small part of what she thinks about you. The main thing is you have to feel good about you and you have to complete tasks. You have to get some wins under your belt. You have to show that you're a finisher. You can't just be a talker. You can't just be a dreamer. Right? Or a daydreamer. You got to get some wins under your belt. You got to show completion. And that would build up equity, the trust equity. Right? So, hey, does she believe in you? Look at yourself in the mirror and say, should she? Do I got any wins? Do I got any completions? All right? And go from there. Hey, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, right? And pass this video along. Peace.